Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, genuinely, uh, thank you, obviously, to Andrew and Jason and Debbie and the gaffer, uh, and obviously everyone else involved. There's so many people, I'm sure I forget for every year, but um, I really appreciate it and appreciate everyone's support. Uh, the trust have already started supporting me, so it's massive. There's so many people involved at the football club who are probably more deserving of something like this than me. Uh, I get that as a player it's different, but um, yeah, I. I as a family, I think we just really, really feel really privileged. So, um, thank you. I'm sure you'll hear a lot from me throughout the year, so I won't bore you too much. But, um, yeah, thank you for me again. That's the shortest answer I've ever had. Tell us about what they watched on the wedding. Yeah, um, um, in terms of uh, yeah. in terms of money. Yeah. Well, we've got the game coming up against Rotherham on the 24th, just hang on to make absolutely certain how many people we can have in before tickets go on sale, but hopefully next week. Got various other events uh, lined up, uh, a sports dinner, uh, Lloyd's hopefully going to get some of up to a comedy night. But the response we've had already from the sponsors is fantastic, and uh, I think we're going to have a, a great year, and I think it shows how everybody in this town and in this club feels towards James, so I hope that will long continue. I don't know if you want to say anything, uh, Jason and Andrew, about the testimony and about James' his service and the fact that you know now 10 years as a club or very warm with you. Any, uh, any of you three would like to, to, to say anything? No, I mean, there's, there's, a ton of, there's a ton of stuff you can say about James, but actually the biggest thing is it was an easy yes for us. It was in the first week, I think, of Andrew and I being involved. And, you know, as fans, you know, as we are, and people say that again and again, we're just big fans of what James gives to the club over the years. And I just think, in terms of what we want to do over the next few years, in terms of representing the values of the town, of the club, we think James epitomises that. And so as a family man, as someone that loves the town, as someone that's a great servant, as someone that's lived and breathed, and you can tell how he feels about it when they get their one bad days as well as the good days. So it's just dead easy, and it's something that represents how we want to treat, you know, the, the, everyone that's been involved with the club, and, and, and hopefully we'll see many more of these people that are prepared to stick around and do the job for 10 years. So we're just hugely appreciative and, and looking forward to the next year and having some fun with it. If I can just ask the three of you just before we, we start with questions, how you've settled in. Uh, Andrew, you, you, you came along with uh, Jason. I'm trying to be cool now. Um, oh, it works. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's worked. It's settled in, uh, settled in well. It's, uh, it's definitely been a bit of a baptism of fire in terms of uh, the, the, the sort of depth and breadth of things that you, you have to get your head around. Um, but we've had some fantastic help, particularly from Christine and Dave, who have you know, held our hands. Uh, there's, there's been people who have been involved in the, in, in the kind of running of running up in both the club and the trust for, for, for a long time. So, uh, from that perspective, it's been, it's, been, uh, it's, been, it's been really good. We've been made to feel very welcome. Um, you know, I think, I think as, we've, as we've said on you know, a number of occasions, um, you know, we are very much in this thing mode. We are, we are want to, you know, want to learn. We are learning about football. Um, we, you know, we, we, we've, 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 all, we've all had careers in, 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 other, in other areas, and, uh, and but football's you know, a, a unique set of challenges that, uh, yeah, that gets us all excited, particularly on a match day. But there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that need to be uh, need to be right in order for the match day to be right. And, uh, that's what we aim to, to try and do and in place. Debbie, you've, you've been involved as well. You've come in recently. How are you finding it? Um, it's been great. I've been uh, overwhelmed by the warm welcome. It's been a whirlwind for weeks, uh, without a doubt. Um, but, you know, full of some lovely surprises and it's it's an infectious environment to, to work in. Um, I'm very conscious of the need and the pressure uh, to to get it right. You know, having been chief exec in other organisations, I felt I, I felt I knew pressure, but not pressure in terms of a football club and what it needs to deliver. So, you know, you'll have heard, heard me say on social media, I feel um, really privileged to have the role. I think it's a wonderful a wonderful place to be, and I'm really excited about what the club can not only do um, on the pitch but also in the community. 
So if I can just ask you, you briefly, you know, you, your priorities when you came in, I think you looked at the training ground straight away, didn't you? That, that was something that I think you looked at straight away, all three of you at the training ground and needed facilities. So why did you choose that and, and how's it going? Well, to just answer the previous question as well, I'm just, um, I don't know if people are aware of this, but Andrew and I were originally going to do this behind the scenes and not get involved with the day-to-day. -day. And as we went through the process, we just realised that we had no choice but to put hands up and, and actually do some of the work as well. So that was a testimony to how energised we are. We looked at the opportunity and what we think, you know, we have no choice about this. Fans of the club, you know, we want the best for the town and for the club. And so it's been a real privilege and we don't take that lightly. So I want to share that with you today is that we're listening more than one feedback, but we take the responsibility really seriously as well. This is all of our club. We mean that. You get this sort of shit about custodians and stuff is that we mean that. Is that we know the club will outlive us by many hundreds of years, hopefully. So, but we want to we want to improve the organisation every day we're involved with it, and so we're committed to doing the work. Is the punchline? Um, the, the training was dead easy. We, one of the things with the diligence process, Andrew and I hadn't been down to Cheapside, and we were quite surprised actually by the sort of, you know, the, 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 the sort of. The, oh, be careful. I've said it by the way, I said I'm not going to say anything about the past, I'm not going to look forward to so I'll keep catching myself as well. But, um, oh, it was amazing, lovely. We went down there today and we thought maybe we can improve it a bit. That was it, wasn't it? No, it was, um, well, look, it's, 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 it's the office of the, the players, right? It's where they spend their time, it's where we can attract new people to the club. So it's, it's a really easy truism, right? So you, want, you want to give people the tools to do the job. And quite frankly, we thought we could do better. Um, with some relatively um, um, superficial, I guess, in the first instance, changes. And, and then, you know, I'll answer Andrew now, because Andrew's got the, um, the property expertise, but we think, you know, you start with giving the players and Paul and the, everyone associated with the club the right tools to do the job, and that starts with the training facility. The output of that will be out there on a Saturday afternoon, but actually where they spend their time and the culture and the way that they feel that they're respected by what we invest in the club is going to be demonstrated more clearly in, in, in the training facilities. So maybe Andrew can give an update on. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think as part of that, it's, um, it's about what sort of what sort of club you want. You know, do you do you want just to be a club about the first team, or do you want to be a club about the academy? Do you want to be about the community, or do you want to be a bit about all of those things? And you know, we're, we're, we go through a learning curve. Um, it's fair to say, you know, we we speak today. Debbie Jason and I were on our call you know, for an hour and a half talking about um, some best practice within within various training training grounds with with a, you know, an expert from the FA and you know, gathering contacts and, and, and seeing what good looks like and also learning from other people's mistakes and that's you know, that's what we we, you know, we will make mistakes but we want we don't want to make the same mistake twice and if we can avoid making mistakes other people make then then all, all better. Um, but you know, completely, you know, we've got we've got good support from the local authority in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know offering us some sites. Uh, we've got a, a short list of, of sites that we're, we're currently looking at. Obviously, in the short term, we've we've invested some some money into cheap side to help make it uh, as good as it can be. And it's bearing about its limitations. Um, and, and I haven't had the pleasure of going to see the the new pitch yet. But I was told earlier on that uh, it's, it's like a got bowling group, so it will stay that way uh, as opposed to that buff. Um, but but in but in but in, the, in our aspiration over time is to is to create a is to create a, a, a location where the club can both re, be, re, can reflect all of its values, but also also connect with the community and uh, and you know, locating locating the training facility um, and and, and um, the academy importantly as well uh, within within the heart of the town and all of the eastern area is something that we're, we're very very focused on. So the club don't actually own Chiefside, they have their rental. Yeah, cheap side. It's currently currently rented, um, and uh, we will be looking to to sort of own own our own, own office until the long term. Okay, on to the questions. Nice easy one to start with. Uh, we understand from the recent YouTube video that new stadium plans are on hold. Does this mean Blondel Park is going to receive some much needed love? In, so, in if so, what improvements are in the pipeline? Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not all the easy ones. Um, no, 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 we're, we're going through an exercise in the moment of, of looking at the options, and uh, I think one option that, that hasn't been considered uh, perhaps very actively over the last 15, 20 years has been, has been the park itself, and there's always been an assumption that we're going to, we're going to move. So we want to, we want to see if there is an opportunity to reimagine what's here, because 
it holds a lot of you know, memories and and uh, and and, and you know, it's it's got the fit the purpose in, in terms of uh, you know, where, we, where we are currently in the, in, in the league. Um, so we are we are looking at we are looking at options. We are trying to make improvements where we can in the short term. Obviously, but we only we only came in May, and uh, in the meantime, some things you know will have to happen in close seasons, which we've which we you know, which we're in now. So, so getting getting more done, obviously more changes next season. But we focus on the pitch. We focus on um, uh, you'll see the pitches. Obviously, the usual looks great at this time of year, but uh, we we have we have. Uh, invested some, some money into the pitch, we've got some, uh, put some mitigation in. Um, you'll notice, hopefully, assuming it gets every time, um, a, new, a new barrier upstairs in the upper guns, which um, um, will we'll bring, in, bring into play about 300 seats that currently have a restricted view, because of the very clear glass um, uh, barrier. Uh, and, and then we're, we're also looking at other, other aspects. Uh, everyone talks about toilets, and that's something that we're, we're going to definitely on this. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and, and I guess the other the other aspect, which um, again the trust is, the predates our involvement, uh, but we've been supportive of, of what the trust has been doing as a fans zone. And I think you know, that's something that um, you know, will, will be will make the match day experience better and different for uh, for everybody. Um, everybody going forward, we'll see in that corner over there, you know, it's kind of coming together. Uh, but I suppose it's difficult if you are going to move. You don't want to spend too much money on it, but, but if you're not going to move for a while, then, then you need to spend as, as, as much as, as is need be, I suppose. Yeah, and, and again, we're, we're in the art of the possible, so we were talking this morning, for example, about, about the experience that the, the um, uh, people have it at the full, so Craven Cottage being a, in a very old ground that's been in the process of being re, re, partly rebuilt, and, and kind of their experience and learning their experiences. Um, Millwall again, similar similar story where they're running a new stadium, but again, um, you know, what they do, what they're doing to improve improve the uh, improve the facilities. So um, we've got to look at both options. Uh, and yeah, if we do decide on the stadium move, um, you know, it won't be it won't be a gut a gut, a gut, a gut, a gut reaction. It's not something we're think, targeting to do um, in, in short term, but it's part of we want to at least understand the options and and decide, uh, decide if it's going to really improve the organisation. And not just to build on that as well, Johnny, Andrew's the ex this, but, you know, saying the obvious, we don't fill London Park, so the idea of building a state-of-the-art 12,000 seat stadium somewhere else and expecting to pay for itself just doesn't make sense. So again, it's really important that we balance the needs of modernising the club with the commercial reality of, of where we are as well. So the obvious thing is we can bring the performance to the pitch and get people filling building Park, that make an easy decision as well. But um, I think, you know, for all the nostalgia, you know, of, of this place, I think, I think, you know, we want to balance, and obviously Mark, Mark's helping us with this as well, that, you know, we want to balance, you know, is there a realistic opportunity to go park, or is one of the options that's been tabled prior to us, what makes sense for the long term? So then one of the things for us is that this, this, this isn't a vanity project, we're not interested in building something for the sake of it, we want to do something that puts the club in shape for the launch of 43 years. So then that's the balance, and I think making the decisions that are commercially viable, but actually set the up for the long term and be really successful. So I presume you, what you're trying to do now is make the day, the match day experience more enjoyable for the fans while they're coming. Apart from that 26% in the survey that said the food was great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone here? <laughs> they all play yeah. they yeah. or hospitalised. Um, <laughs> Yeah, look, I think the, the wonderful thing about working with Dave and Christine is that there wasn't many surprises from the survey. You know, it was stuff around food, the toilets, seeing the family. And I think, you know, credit to the people that have been doing this, like Dave and Christine and the rest of the Trust, for years, is that the fan zone solves a lot of these problems. It's not a panacea, but, you know, having a place to come with good food, an atmosphere pre-game, and, you know, and, and um, you know, some, something good to drink. And then the other stuff we can, we can improve. Uh, cosmetically, so I think um, I think improving that experience. But I mean, I'll give the lady said the same thing again and again. You know, the work that's done at, at the training ground is the important bit. You know, and attracting players and giving them the right kit, the right performance, the tools, the right gym, etc. Um, that'll be that way the investment will pay off. And then over time, we'll make the decision on the on the long term um, future of the stadium. And is there anything you can do to help our fantastic disabled supporters? Because I've sat down there occasionally, when I, I sat down there at least 10 and I went down there for a couple of games, and uh, they have my utmost 
respect and admiration for putting up with that every week in, in the past because you can't see because the, you're fairly low down. The subs will run up and down in front of you. And it's, it's, I know it's such a difficult thing to do. I know that the Trust have worked hard on, on getting the toilets better and, and, and things like that. But they're such a fantastic group of people. Is there anything else you, you can do for them? I've spent a lot of my life saying, Debbie, if you're going to have to tell I apologise. I mean, again, we're listening, Moses. If, if, if there is stuff that we can do, we'll commit to listening and trying to enact that stuff. I don't know if there's anything in the near term, Debbie, at all. I mean, I think it's certainly been put on our agenda, you know, as in, we, we're talking about inclusivity, and we've got to be really serious about that. We can't just say it, we've got to, we've got to mean it. Uh, and we know that the experience isn't great, and so we, we've got to make sure that we, we, we listen to the comments and we do what we can. Um, you know, there are a whole raft of, of things going on around the stadium, um, but sometimes solutions are harder to find, but I think the energy is there to find them now, and that's what's really important. Thank you. A question that follows on from what you were saying about the fan zone, really. Can we see more local food, drink supplies like Doc's beers, steel fish and chips? And I know Doc's are involved in, in the zone, aren't they? That's probably one for Dave and Christine, actually. Do you want to grab that one? Dave. Dave? <laughs> he's not in anyway, that's a good sign. Shall I just shout? Um, yes, Doc's beers are part of the fan zone. They'll be doing both drinks and food. And then around the kiosk in the ground, we will have some local food suppliers as well, doing different food to what you've seen before. So watch your space, basically. And, and the other thing, you might see in the advertisement, the Debbie's put out for a head chef as well. So, so again, we're trying to think of some simple remedies for improving the quality throughout the organisation, but and the fan zones where I'll be eating on that stage, I think. Sorry, that sounded like, yeah, sorry, I just realised that. I'll put it all today. <laughs> Can we just cut that bit? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of you, there we are smiling when I say this one. Is Ian Fleming still chief exec? And what is your specific role? So Ian is chief operating officer and I'm the chief executive. Which means what? In terms of decision making? And then... Well, overall I'm accountable for all decision making. Um, you know, as directed by the board, so I report into Jason and Andrew. Um, but ultimately, in terms of the paid staff at the club, um, I am ultimately responsible, and Ian will oversee um, some of the day-to-day -day operations. You know, Ian's a very experienced club secretary, and it's really important that we we have that continuity. And our next question. I'm an exile supporter. Is there any way of continuing the streaming of matches similar to I follow? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see actually. So the, 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 we're, we're waiting to hear what the BT Sport deal is. I, I think it's unlikely, if I'm being honest. I think the, uh, the BT Sport still down in, in the National League means that they have the rights to sort of 3 pm games. There might be some of the games at different times, but um, slim possibility, but I think it's unlikely to be honest. I think it'll either be one thing or the other. There will either be the fans back in the stadium. If the fans aren't allowed back in the stadium, then I think they will like the screaming continuing. But if the fans are back in the stadium, then what kicks in is is, uh, is actually I think a UEFA rule that basically says that no no uh, no matches can be broadcast live at three o'clock on Saturday. So um, that that will that will not get unfortunately on screaming. That's something I suppose fans have got to get used to again after last season. Yeah, it's amazing. As, well, as you, most of you know, that I don't live in the town anymore, so it's been amazing. It's been fantastic to be able to see every game. I wish every game. Um, and we did talk about whether there's a way we go in individual streaming because the tech's not that difficult these days. It's slightly harder than a moving microphone, but <laughs> not that difficult. Um, but you know, I, I think we're going to be bound by the conditions of the motion control in BT, but, um, but unfortunately, um, it'd be great if we could do something over time, but I think we'll be restricted. I will just add that Radio Homicide will be available at the next season. So it's the one good thing. Right, uh, next question. We seem to give promising youth players a, a pro contract. There seems to be a lack of games or opportunities to further their development. Are there any thoughts or plans to continue their development at under 23 level? 
Well, you'll hear, you'll hear them say this a lot, actually, as well, so this is not trying to dodge your question, but, you know, at the moment, we're, we're not football people, so, so we're fans like all of you, so I have a view on this, but we're trying to defer to professionals, and one of the things we're being incredibly, and I'm just saying this, but, you know, we brought Mark Palmer in originally, and you'll know Mark, Mark was a sort of football consultant, so the idea originally was Mark could help guide us and ask some sensible questions of everyone in the club already. And we thought that Mark would probably help us with some of the recruitment and the academy strategy. And it seems that once we got in and we started to understand that Neil's you know, probably one of the best in the business and see what he does. So giving Neil's the opportunity to design our academy experience and you know, the investment there is one thing. Paul and Chris, as you've seen with the sort of signs we made early on, were meticulous in their planning before we closed the season and the pre-season and also in terms of the targets they wanted to try and to bring in as well. So um, we'll defer this, you know, we're committed to the academy structure but we'll defer to the experts on this and we'll augment the organisation over time with more people who have a view on that. But to be honest with you, you know, we'll have we have an opinion on everything like everyone will as a fan. We want to make sure the experts are making the decision on this stuff. What we would say we're committed to the long term strategy of the academy. We all know that uh, you know, seeing local players come through is such an important part of our identity as a town, as a club. And we, and we want to continue with that as well, but um, it'll, be, it'll be professional decisions rather than um, Andrew and I in particular. How's your funding been affected for, for you to team by, by coming out of the Football League? Is, is it all too much? Yeah, it's dropped by about 200 grand, I think, so I Yeah, about 200 grand was dropped, so. But, but I mean, that, you're still committed to that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, and Neil sent a note out to parents, I think, about a month ago. It was one of the first conversations that we had. It's like, it looked like Again, you'll hear us saying this over the next few years, but success on the pitch is, is something that we need to have and we need to demonstrate that. But we're also measuring our success and the impact in the community. And part of that is giving kids in the towns the belief that they can come through and be playing on that pitch one day. And so we know that's more than the financial value or the one or two kids that make it through. It's about representing aspiration for everyone that lives in the town. I had it as a kid, you know, obviously it wasn't good enough, but um, you know, there's so many your people in the town dream of playing out there and they're so beyond the, the financial and monetary value of the investment and what you can get in returns on players it's the aspiration and the civic pride that you get from thinking you can be part of it so that'll be a measure of our success continuing that. Uh, next question, you're, you're having to make considerable investments on and off the pitch at what point do you think the club will be sustainable without you having to sub subsidise it each year? Ever? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we, we are a long time ago on this. Um, I mean, we've, I think we, it's been quite well documented that we've not come into this um, as a sort of financial investment, and I think as Jason said before, it's a huge financial investment. But um, you know, we, 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 we do, we're doing it because we, we, we believe in the, uh, we're going to do it in the projects, we believe in, in, in the future of the, the future of the club and what to support it. As far as um, the, the, the sort of immediate future is concerned. You know, we are on the rise. We are seeing some seeing that the clubs are being lost this season. Um, but I have to say, we have a very prudent budgeting process, um, and, and we hope that we'll be able to sort of outperform in terms of assumptions around uh, around attendances and assumptions around commercial revenues and other things. And that will be all, all, all help sort of move the uh, move the move the club back to back to a stage where it's being where it's sustainable. And what they will say about the previous regime is, is that um, is it, you know, we, it was left in the beginning of the financial state, um, it was run, as you know, prudently. Um, <laughs> uh, but that, I mean, that, that is, a, is a good legacy in the sense, in the sense that you know, the club is, unlike a lot of other clubs, not signed up with debt, um, and you know, we, we've effectively injected equity, so, so that there's, no, there's no debt that the, 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 club is, the, club is, the club is taking on. So it's, it is set, even today, for, you know, for, for the future. But, um, Clearly, we're not a bottomless bit of cash. So my wife, my wife would uh, definitely. He's old now. Yeah, I'm told her. I'm told her. She, she spotted, she spotted a photo of my wife. Um, but uh, it, it all, it also is just you know we 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 are committed. It's, uh, the commitment is beyond what we've what we, the initial commitment we've made to invest in the club. But um, we we want to we want to create a long term sustainable business that we can then. Pass on to the next custodians to 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 uh, to, to sort of run 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 going forward. I mean, I'm raising all the clear eyes as well, Johnny. We were, yeah, the levels of investment required. You know, we're, we're both 
you know, done scale businesses, so we understand planning budgets here and strategy, and I think we understood the level of investment, but some, some of the most significant changes won't be that expensive, I think, I and mean, that's the reality. The big changes are cultural. You know, you can spend a few quid cosmetically on stuff, you know, some things like footballs, um, playing surface, and, you know, and some of the stuff we're gonna do in rooms like this, but actually, the biggest opportunity is cultural, it's mindset, it's how you get people believing that you want to invest, and it's often, you know, it's that sort of penny-wise, pound stupid, whatever the phrase is. And then sometimes a little bit of investment gives you a return, but you have to have a little bit of courage and ambition and vision to be able to do that. And I think the levels of investments are reasonable. And over time, you know, we, we, we've said this, you know, uh, um, you know the, the idea is that this is, a, this is an opportunity to build a coalition of the willing. You know, I was just saying before we came on to you and to James about, you know, what's been overwhelming actually the first couple of months is the number of people that got in touch offering help or support. And there were a number of, of investors that would like to invest in the club. Local people have done well, both living in the town and away. And I think what we've said to them is, we don't need the money now, so I'm not just take money for the sake of it, but we'll build out a proper investment vehicle that everyone can see in the public and people. There are people that want to support the work in the town and the club and over time we'll invite them in but at the moment you know, we're going to undermine this and, and hopefully you know, if the season goes the way it will those losses will be, will be you know, become narrower over time but so the objective is not to lose too much money and that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I've been a bit sick saying that actually as a, as a professional investor but it's um, I said, I said again and again that the payoff is not financial the payoff is being part of this community and, and doing something we can all be proud of in 10 years. And so that's, you know, money can't buy that sort of thing. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll succeed in that collectively. And hopefully my wife's not listening to that and my kids aren't. Realise I'm gambling their inheritance. <laughs> What's it been like in terms of uh, the reaction to you since, since you came in? I know, I know I've spoken to each of you individually about that. But the response from the fans and from the town, you'd hardly believe we'd, we'd relegate them. I was, I was assuming that these guys were going to take that question. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the response to my appointment has been overwhelming. Um, absolutely overwhelming. The, the positivity is, has been infectious. Um, and, you know, what I want, the, the question you asked earlier around the, the roles, I want to expand on what Jason just said there around some of the things, some of the changes that we can make won't always be financial and that, you know, that's, that's the responsibility I hold. It's my, it's my job to work to change the, build the culture of the club, to build the presence of the club in the community, to get the best out of every single member of the club, to make sure that all of our people are doing the best job possible so that that then impacts on on what we do out there on a on a Saturday afternoon. So, um, you know, I've been overwhelmed by the the welcome, the positivity. Um, it's it's a it's a privilege, and and I, I feel that given my commitment to the town and my commitment to seeing Grimsby thrive, that we can achieve so much here. So, really great. Andrew, Jason, anything you'd like to add to that? Or? Well, I think everybody very eloquently, and you know, again, the reaction so far has been really positive, although we haven't actually played a game yet, so uh, hopefully, hopefully it's the same after, uh, after, after Macca keeps a record of clean sheets um, at the beginning of the season. But uh, no pressure, right? But um, no, no, in all seriousness, the, 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 the reaction's been amazing, and uh, as, as Jason said, the, the support we've got, we've got from uh, very, very far afield has is, is, is been, is been really, really encouraging and um, you know, we'll aim to harness that and, as I, said, as I said before, aim to try and adopt best practice um, in, uh, in, 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 as we as we get to build the And that's been shown so far, I suppose, by the season to get set. Yes, so far so good, although we could, we could do with a few more, obviously. And, um, and just to build on both those comments, that, um, you know, I want to talk to my kids about the young kids now, 12 and 9 year old, and I say to them, look, um, you know, whatever happens in your life, face it in the same way. You know, if you're, not, you're never as bad as people say you are, and you're never as good. So you just got to stay focused on what you're trying to achieve and your values as a life and your family. And I think um, we've done nothing but write a check at the moment. Any fool can do that. You know, so, so actually the work starts now on imbuing the beliefs and the culture and the values that we think are already in the town in the club. 
And then um, we know there'll be bad days, and so for me, we'll face them in the same way. We'll face them open-eyed, open-minded, we'll have a conversation, and we'll, 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 we'll try and improve every time we're here, but we're not kidding ourselves as well, is that there's going to be some shockers, and we'll be in the fire in that. But so, you know, as long as you've got a mission and a vision that you're trying to fulfill over time, and then if you're not good enough, as long as you try and you put the hours in and put a shift in, if you're not good enough and you fall short, you can ask yourself what you've learned in that person and hand it on to someone who can do a better job. So, um, for, for me, you know, if you can't be optimistic and feel good today before we've kicked a ball, you know, you've you got to look at your life and your attitude. So, this is the time to feel good about stuff, right? So, um, before the results start coming in, but it's, um, you know, at the moment, um, it's, 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 been, it's been brilliant. Um, this question follows on quite nicely from that one. Have you set Paul Hurst any specific targets for this season and the next re-promotion? So we're starting with Paul tomorrow actually, so uh, we we'll took some advice again and we've been to a lot of other football clubs about what's the best way to empower Paul to do his job and yet agree on some common goals for the organisation. So we've put a draft together, but it'll be a, we'll co-create that, we'll sit down and over the next month or so decide what the objectives are. But what you won't hear from us is wild predictions about where we're going to be in five months. So I think you hang yourself with that stuff. You'll hear us say this again and again, we want to improve the organisation every day we're involved with it. And that, of course, means on the pitch and in the community. But, you know, that'll be something we'll sit down with Paul over the next, we'll sit down tomorrow and over the next month decide. But the, the aim is this, to empower him, to give him the capability to feel like he can, he can really control his own destiny over the next few years. And I know, speaking to you before, um, it, it is something you see as a long-term plan. Obviously, I know football results will always depend, you know, a manager's career will always depend on, on results, but I know that you're thinking of, of long term. Well, that's why an sort of objective saying process has got to be with a long term vision in mind. Because look, you know, no one has to tell James or Paul to go out there and try and win, right? That's, that's what they do. So the idea of saying win a load of games and get us promoted, that's, what, that's in their DNA. The objective of the, of the organisation has to be to have a bigger mission than that. And so that's the conversation we want to have. So how do you measure that? Because it's such a game of fine lines. There's loads of books on this, by the way, I was interested about. You, know, you, you can play really well and lose. It's the only sport you can do that. And so therefore, we want to make sure the metrics of the business are observing. If we play well and lose to a strategy to part of our long-term vision, then we want to have that data so we're not making bad decisions at five past five on Saturday afternoon. And so it's about making sure you keep the emotion and the passion in the business, but keep your head looking 10% above the horizon of what you're trying to achieve for the long term as well. And that won't always be um, just what the, uh, the results on the Saturday afternoon. Uh, next question. Is Mr. Shoots' interest in the Ice House part of a long term plan for the stadium? And you? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the short, the short answer is, is we're not involved with Tom uh, in, uh, anymore. In, 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 he's not in the consortium and won't be in the consortium going forward. Um, we are, uh, you know, we, we are considering the docks as an alternative, as, as one of the alternatives, along with, along with Green Street, as we openly discussed, as well as Bond Park. So I guess that's what I would say about that. Have you set yourself a, a target in terms of time as to, to when you might make a decision going forward? No, no, not really. I think we just at the moment we just want to assess what's there, and what the option, options are, and then we can then we can make, uh, make those calls. But, but, but again. Uh, again, in the train, as, as we said before, you know, the stadium is, is a, a very distant number two to get in the training ground sorted out. Well, we've had some interesting questions so far, but I think this is the biggest one so far. Harry had a grown flexible sausage. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we had this on Monday night, and one of the things that I think we should be really clear about is that we've said we're going to be an inclusive club, so is there not room for both? <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> um, just, there's another question here going back to Blundell Park. While Blundell Park is our spiritual home, one of its biggest drawbacks is parking facilities. Is there anything you can do to open a car park possibly over the railway line or anywhere else? Yeah, I'm aware. Is that one for my list? Yeah, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, that, that, that's one of the variables when we look at the stadium plan, is that, you know, that comes up again and again and again. So, uh, not at the moment, to be entirely honest, we'll, we'll put it on the back log, but it's not. 
thinking the list of stuff we're trying to get to solve in the short term. That, that hasn't come up as the first time I've heard of that, but we should definitely definitely put that on, on the back of uh, Another question. My daughter Holly had an idea to start a Junior Mariners YouTube channel, the aim of which was to include and entice the next generation of Grimsby fans. So I suppose the follow-up question to that is, you know, what can you do to uh, bring the youngsters to Blundell Park? Well, first of all, I want to thank Holly for that wonderful, wonderful video. I don't know whether, I know if the dad's over there, and I don't know whether ever anyone saw that on Twitter, but it was, but it was, you know, it was amazing. Uh, and I saw that it was retweeted. It was infectious, um, and a real, a real great um, credit to to Holly. And it was a privilege for the club to be able to share that. And we want to hear from our younger fans. You know, they are the they are the future of this club. So. Could we get our younger fans involved in a social media YouTube channel? Why, why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we listen to what the younger fans want to do? We want to encourage them and showcase some of the talent that we that we've clearly got in in the area. So, you know, we are listening, and we want to be listening to those younger fans. So, there was some stuff that came up in the in the survey, and we we need to look at those in more detail. But in terms of a a, a YouTube. Uh, channel for our, for our young the young runners. I think that's a, a brilliant idea. Um, I've still got a few more questions here. There will be room for one or two if people have got a few that they want to ask. Um, I'm sure Christina can come around and collect them from you if, if you've got one. Um, are there any plans to add some kind of on the pitch half time or for the game entertainment in the future involving fans like we'll see at other clubs? We, we definitely want to, you know, that one of the things in the, in the fan survey, 4,663 of you who had so much to say, which was an amazing response, was that you want us to improve the match day experience. And one of the things I'm really keen to see is that when we, you know, when we, when we back in Royal Park. Um, at the start of the season, that's going to be an amazing thing, and it's got to feel. It's, you know, it's got to make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. It's got to feel amazing because it'll be such a big deal and so great to have the fans back. So we've been looking at the PA system, and we've been looking at entertainment. So we're looking at all of those options, uh, and, and Sam and I are particularly doing a, a little bit of work at the club to to enhance that experience. So absolutely. Uh, next question. What fundamental changes have been made to bring the Grimsby Town in line with the B Club business model? Yes, yeah, so thanks for asking that question. Um, not, not, not a lot at the moment. So I think part of the, um, the process is that you do an initial assessment. So you look at how the business is operating already, and then you use that as a baseline value to improve the organisation. So uh, we're going through that process already. and. Um, Sam and Debbie, uh, there's a consultant I've worked with historically, that's guiding us through the process and we're trying to get a baseline in the next few months so that then we'll know what's the work that we need to do over time to bring us to sort of peak or uh, status. But you know, that would include you know, our green credentials, it would be our work in the community, it would be uh, how we treat our people internally as well. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity and what I love about it, and I'm biased, obviously I'm a trustee of peak or in the UK is that you don't have to be perfect, but it gives you a framework of how you can improve your organisation. And so we're going to use it as a sort of a, um, as a ready-made blueprint of how we can think about improving the values and the focus on the strategy over the next few years. But we've done nothing yet. I mean, we're just assessing stuff. There's some rudimentary spend we've made in the organisation, but we've got to get that baseline and then that will inform the strategy over the next couple of years. Has there been any other interest from other clubs? There has actually, yeah, I've had a couple of clubs that are following from confidential apples to mention them. Those two clubs have been in touch with me. Um, I'm ignoring the call so we can be the first one in the world. Um, I've spoken to, spoke to them about it. And, and what's been, again, again, another lovely thing actually that we didn't know, but yeah, the fair the fair game stuff that Christine's leading on for us. There's a real there's a real groundswell, there's a real moment in time of, of clubs that want to think differently about their role in society. And so I think I think my hope is that you know, at the back of the fair game stuff, and we did the beat goal and set the, you know, set the standard of our ambition and other people. There's a, there's a whole lot of opportunity to use B Corps um, as a vehicle for changing the narrative on sports role in society as well. So um, I'm keen on the first. It'd be, be a lovely accolade for the town, for the club, if we could be the first professional sports centre in the world 
to get speaker or status. So we're trying to push it through, and um, you know, fingers crossed, we'll we'll, we'll do that at pace. I didn't write the next one. What is our relationship with Radio Humberside? <laughs> 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 Just like I said, Saturday afternoon. <laughs> um, and it's just broadcast on the radio rather than the internet. Yeah. I don't really understand the, the, the second bit, but um, uh, what's our relationship with our radio on the side? Quite. <laughs> no, look, I mean, I mean, one of the things that we've stated is that it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a line that's been drawn on any of the stuff negativity in the past. And so I think I think what we've said is that actually I'm not even aware of a lot of the conversations before the media. You know, we've, we've, we've enjoyed the support and the help and the insight, the wisdom and the historical context of, of, of the club. So for us it's been great. All the conversations have been positive so far. And I think, you know, I've been listening to John's voice for years remotely and so it's been nice to meet him and um, and, um, and, and and spend some time understanding you know, the passion that all the, I mean, I think you've got to start with assume positive intent. Everybody that's reported on the club loves the club and wants the best for it. And I think it's their job to ask us difficult questions at times. So I think if you have that filter, then actually in, in those post-match interviews or in those interviews, there's going to be times when you know, if we've got trust and respect for the media, which we have so far, then it's their job actually to ask us the difficult questions on your behalf as well. So, so far, so good. John, what's your, seriously, what's your view so far? I mean, Oh well, yeah, great. I mean, it's been a breath of fresh air. I think everybody feels the same, whether you work for Radio on the side, whether you're a fan, whatever. It's just a breath of fresh air. And um, long may it continue. <laughs> uh, I think I don't know if the second part of the question was about broadcasting on the internet. Can you remind me of that this 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 moment in about a year from now? It's kind of as a bad result or something that we do. So we might be reminding once in a while. Just just to add to that, um, Radio on the side can broadcast the games on the internet next season. They didn't have the rights for the football league but they have for the National League, so people can listen to that. I don't know if that was what the second half of the question was about, and they, they will still be broadcasting on the radio as well. Um, how do you intend to restore the partnership with the local police? Well, that's a dead easy one, actually. It's, it's not, it's not a, a refresh dialogue, right? And so I've spoken to Lee a couple of times personally, and there's just a willingness to, to, to reset. So um, again, it's just not worth the rehashing. Anything that's come on the past, we're committed to to, to you know, interacting with every part of civil society and everyone in the community. And obviously, the police are a huge part of that. So far, so good. It helps that has a great relationship as well. Maybe you can. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I worked with Lee Freeman in previous roles, um, but I think you know it is all about relationships, isn't it? Andrew and I have got an interview with the police tomorrow. Um, we've, we've drawn a line in the sand. Um, I think people will judge us on how we conduct ourselves. Uh, we will treat others as we expect to be treated. It's, it's that kind of stuff. It's, it's not difficult. It is about building those relationships. But you know, I have worked with Lee Freeman, the chief constable, before, and, and he's, he's clearly you can see he's a big supporter of the club. He wants us to do well, and I'm sure that that will that will uh, resonate uh, with, with many members of his, his team too. So. Um, I'm really optimistic because I am all of the relationships that we need to, to build and develop. And we'll have a space for one or two more questions if, if anybody has got them. I have, there's a couple I haven't asked because they've been covered by, by other questions. Uh, not this one. In future, are you going to do fan shirts in female sizes? Are we going to do what, sorry? Fan shirts. Fan shirts. Um, well, God, as a, a female chief executive, I would, I would hope so. I would hope so. I'll have to have a word with Ray. Is there a big, is there a big need for that? Uh, is there going to be a big, a big demand for that? I know it's a, it's a small percentage of our, our shirt sales, but if, if the need is there, then we'll respond to that need. Um, FA Cup third round draw. Who do you want and why? I don't know. We've qualified, yes. <laughs> 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 Well, I've been following the club for quite a few years and I've seen us play pretty much everybody in the top flight except Man United. Yeah. And, and we haven't we have played about, I think, since actually 47, so they've been the one I want to uh, shoot. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I know it's a slightly premature question, but it has been asked. <laughs> 
Debbie, would you like this to play? If you choose anybody to play in the third round of the FA Cup. Uh, Derby County. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's from Derby, isn't it? That's why. Yeah. My, my, my city. My, my, my father-in-law's from city. My, my kid, Chris Lins. I was, was claimed to the city for like eight days old, so um, I'll be dragging him here next season, kicking and screaming against his will. It'll be nice to, nice to see him. Um, nice to see him yet here. Um, why have you changed the shirt manufacturers this year? So, well, actually, the other man, we're pre dancers actually. So, I think, by the way, I'm, I'm personally, I think those new shirts look amazing. So, uh, but that, that pre dates the decision on the shirts. Um, it's made, I think, in December, isn't it? Right, yeah, so it's, it's, it's been a long time, so it's all credit to people that have been involved in that. I just think it was uh, time for a change, so it's one for, that's one for Dave Smith, I think, it's a brilliant job, I think. It's slightly better quality, it's a bigger range as well, so people seem to be happy with it, but um, yeah, that, that predates as well. We, when, we, when we start getting involved in January, coming down, they show the chairs the kits and stuff, I think it was a good decision, but yeah, it was, um, it was probably a question for somebody else. And how are the sales going? Of the shirts? Yeah, really, really well. Thanks. They had a great weekend this weekend, and obviously the second and third shirts will go on sale in a, in a couple of weeks. And I think the, the shirts in themselves, you know, um, in terms of some of the things that have surprised me in my first four weeks, it is the level of commitment that goes in behind the behind the. Um, scenes to, to try and get a shirt that the fans are going to like and um, that, that will go down really well. You know, this, this, it's been meticulous um, in, in the team and they, they deserve a, a huge amount of credit for that because they take huge pride in that. Um, and I think it is a, a great example of where the team were listening. I think the feedback was that you weren't happy with the quality and you did want us to change and so clearly um, that they were listening and they've responded to that and that will continue, that, will, that process will continue. And we won't always be able to deliver everything that every fan wants, but hopefully what we, what we will be, um, not judged on, but we, we've been very transparent, I think, in my four weeks here, in terms of our communications. And I think when, we, when there is something that's put forward, that we can't necessarily deliver. It will be important that we come back to you and say, on this occasion, we're not not able to deliver this, and this is why. And hopefully, you'll respect that as much as all the times that we say, yeah, of course we can deliver that, and we can respond to that, and we can respond to this. Uh, a few more questions. What's going on with the stadium? With the stadium manager is the question. And, and have, you have, well, have you got a, a stadium manager as such at the moment? And uh, um, well, that's what's happened to the last one, but I think that's, that's the ins I presume that's what people are asking. Okay, so Nick Dale left um, mid-June and we've appointed a guy called Paul Thorpe, uh, experience uh, in health and safety. Paul used to work um, at GT Set in the academy. He's been in the role for a week and three days and um, he's, he's, he's absolutely loving it. He's a great addition to the team. Was that your question, Christine, that you made? No! So, how's Christine doing? I'm sure that's the next question. All the nasty questions are going to be Christine. They're on Twitter, though, as well. They're on Twitter, she says. And so is this one, apparently. Um, what's the latest on shares? Is Mike Parker still involved in, in shares? I know, I think I read something that, about that we talked about this. Online, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, the answer to the question is Mike still very, very much a shareholder and supported. Um, as part of the process, we, we bought half of his uh, half of his holding. And we gave him the option, and he, he he decided that's what he wanted to do um, for then personal reasons. Um, Ian also did get a number of people that approached the club when we were talking about the idea of moving from PLC to an empty company, and, and who expressed an interest in selling their shares. And Jason, Jason, and Ice Company. And, of all those shares now, so we're currently over just over sixty percent of the uh, share. Are they looking to increase that? It's uh, yeah, yes. happy with the way it is now. Uh, I think it's, it's fine. It's fine the way it is. I suspect we'll end up going down rather than up in the future. As that's 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 what's leading to um, as other people other people potentially invest. But for the time for the time being, um, we're in, I think we're in, we're in a good place. So. I am looking for other sponsors. Other than yours. 
No, I mean, at the moment, I mean, Young's have been like the longest serving sponsor of a football club, so that's amazing. So, you know, more broad comment is we'd love to improve the commercial offering of the club overall, but no is the short answer. They're brilliant support of the club and you know we're really proud to the sign up for this season as well but you know, over time obviously we want to improve, improve the commercial revenue for, for across the board but no, we're really delighted that they've, they've signed up for another year and appreciative of that as well. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to have it. Yeah, if you look at most most clubs that tend to get sponsored by gambling companies or or, or you know, more local companies, young to be a local company but also national ratings. So we could well be very proud of it. What's the response been like generally from the local companies team? I mean, it's, it's, it's on the board comment. I mean, so far, which is from me, many people, but, um, you know, we, we haven't really set out our stall in terms of, you know, the commercial proposition going forward. It, it's, it's driven by the performance on the pitch, first and foremost. Um, but it, I think on the early question about the general um, response has been brilliant from everybody, and, and we're starting getting to know people. And, and, you know, what we didn't want to do is turn up and have an ask straight away. You know, that's, so if you want to build a long-term relationship, personal experience tells me that's not the best way to go about it. So we'll build a long-term vision and proposition for people to get involved. But um, if people would like to um, do that sooner rather than later, we're open to that. But at the moment, we want to build out the vision and the, the proposition more broadly, and then we can invite people to participate. Still do have uh, a couple of space questions if you want any more. Um, I was going to ask you, you knew this was going to take up quite a bit of your time when you, you took over. And I know you're very busy people, I think this was the only time we could get you in the same room together before September. But um, how much of your time is this taking up at the moment? Yeah, quite, quite a lot actually. But I'm, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying it and I'm delighted that Debbie's joined for multiple reasons. I think we're, we're really lucky to have some of her calibre and background in public and private. Uh, um, organisation. So that the first month before Debbie got here, the workload was um, significant, and obviously um, having someone that's so aligned with our values and our vision is is is, is, is brilliant. And that's that's the that was the that was the big big ask in the first month of being here. Um, look, we're entrepreneurs by background as well, so you know you, you you find stuff that you fall in love with as a problem, and you'll just spend the time you need to need to on that problem and put the work in. So, I mean, that's one of the traits of the town, not scared of hard work, never have been. And so for me, um, when it's this enjoyable, and when the, hopefully the payoff for all of us in the future will be both, you know, on the field and in the community, um, it's, it's, um, it's a privilege to be spending time with it. And I'm learning a lot, you know, I'm, I went back to university last year, and some people know that, so for me, it's how I can push myself into new opportunities to keep learning as well. And this is a great learning curve. I'm loving learning stuff about football from Paul, and, and actually Andrew's very modest on this, which is an encyclopedic brain and knowledge of football. It's really impressive. And so for me, just being around and having the privilege to work with Andrew as well, has been a real joy and a bit of got lucky, I think, in terms of complementary skills and our passion for the club. So, you know, um, it's, it's not work. If you, if you find something you love doing, it's not work. So, um, as long as it's not taken away from family time, it won't be a problem. And that's one thing I haven't really talked about tonight, was the importance to, to each of you of the club being the part of the community. Would you just like to sort of, you know... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's for us the, 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 one, of the, one of the key drivers, is, uh, is bringing, bringing the club back into the heart of the community. And, you know, whether, whether that's, I mean, again, the same way as, I think I said before, in the same way as the the training grounds are one of the big surprises, unfortunately, the negative side, one of the big positives for us is the work that Graham, Graham Roger has kind of trusted, the trust have done. And you know, we really want to amplify that work and grow that work and the outreach to the community and the, the help that they give to, to you know, both kids and adults and, and, you know, and, other, and other people who are, who are like, some, some of the best fortunate is, uh, is, is exactly what a football club should do. And, um, yeah, and we're, on, we're on the call today. Um, and one of the comments was that because of the power of the badge, that the, the, the bang for your buck you get in a, um, in a community, from a community perspective, is, is that much greater. And uh, you know, we want to make sure we have to find that. Uh, one question just come in. How did you, uh, how did Jason and Andrew get together and decide to buy the club? So, so it was time actually. So, um I'm going to make a match not come quick then, but it didn't seem appropriate. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, um, yeah, so I, um, a few years ago, I was looking for projects in the town to invest in, and actually, totally by chance, a couple of people mentioned Tom's name. And so I met Tom, and then um, when that became public, Andrew 
uh, through common friends got in touch as well. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of serendipity really, and um, you know, it feels like from a personal point of view, being from the town and loving the community, you know, there's a lot of good work that's going on already. So it was an opportunity to see if we could use our skills and networking resources to amplify that work already. We met um, really three Tom originally, so we have we have that to thank him for at least. Yeah. <laughs> And do you want to add to that? No, I think, I think yeah, Jason, Jason summarises it well, but um, I'm personally delighted that we have that because uh, you know, even, even though we, we effectively live in parallel lives in different, slightly different businesses but from the same roots, it's great to uh, kind of intersect this kind of, uh, this kind of our, our lives and we can make a difference. You know, that's, that's, that's what's important to us. Fixtures are out today. Anything grab you when you, you looked at them? What, was you, what were your first thoughts when you looked at it today? Yeah, my, 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 was, so, so, um, my wife's from Stockport originally. So I was looking for that. So the idea of a bank holiday weekend in Stockport, we've got like 500 family members that want to come already, and they'll not be wearing time shirts, so on her side of the family. So I, I was looking out for that. I met Mark Stott as well, who in Stockport was a lovely man, and got similar ethos actually, in vision for what he's trying to do, although he's declared his ambition of where he wants to be in a couple of years, which I think is, is a challenge because he's bank rolled in that. But no stop up for me, I'm glad it's August 30th, bank holiday weekend. So I was, I was looking forward to that one. Andrew, I'm going to grab you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, again, it's, 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 it's something we're away on the first and last day of the season, but um, again, the first home game is always something to look forward to, and uh, you know, it will be a proper home, home, home crowd, I suspect, with, with Weymouth uh, being our opposition because I suspect they won't be too many. Which will mean we'll be able to sell, um, which I could see to the Oswald hopefully as well, because I hope it's not a crowd. Debbie, you've been too busy, I know as well, isn't it? Uh, no, I looked at uh, we were all uh, desperate to see them. Uh, the Chesterfield game for me, obviously, we've already declared I've only been in this area for 16 years, um, so I'm born and born and raised in Derbyshire. So we've got a lot of friends there, and we've We've been waiting to fix all of our social calendar around those games, and it also corresponds with my youngest daughter's birthday weekend. So I feel that that's going to be a big event in the Cup family. What are you all most looking forward to this season? It's difficult to pick one thing for me. Um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to. Well, when I came um, four weeks ago on the on the Friday, um, my first day here, we had a meeting with the team in this room, and we, before we all assembled, I, I stood at that window and I looked out, and I, I literally I got goosebumps, and I think that um, in my all football stadiums tend to impact me that way, but I, I, I stood there and I felt this is my place of work, and it felt pretty amazing. Um, so I think it's really difficult to, to pick one thing, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the crowds back um, at Lundell Park. I think that will be, that will be fantastic. Just, just don't, don't put the microwave for a minute. I've got a follow-up question that's not just come in. Be very careful how you answer this, because it could be your entire future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned you like your home team of Derby County in the FA Cup. Who would you want to win? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows, knows that I have a really, really big heart and there is definitely a place for two teams. <laughs> so I'll do it. I'll do it. Only on that occasion. <laughs> 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 I'm honest. I'm honest. I can't help. If I told you that I didn't want... If I said I didn't want Derby County to at least have a, you know, get a point, then I've got to answer to my, you know, my husband and my family, haven't I? So I just played it. I played it sort of fairly honestly. The hole's getting a bit bigger now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, what are you most looking forward to? I think that first game's going to be special at home, isn't it? I mean, I'll... No, but Jason, can you test move? That's the one. That's what I'm referring to. Exactly. 17th of July, rather than getting tickets next week. Um, no, I think that's the first, that first the first home game. Is that the 17th? 24th. 24th, sorry, James. <laughs> Pre-line for the 17th, 24th as well. Yeah. Uh, and our first home game is going to be special uh, for many reasons, but the fact that we've all been away for so long from, from, from games, I think you know, we want to do our part, I guess, within the club to make sure that's, um, that's a special occasion as well. So I'm really looking forward to that, to see so many people back in the ground and, and, um, 
and sort of revitalising actually what we've lost in the last couple of years through COVID. So that that would be pretty exciting, I think. Andrew, I think I think for me, I mean, obviously the first home game is going to be brilliant, but the, the Notts County away game is going to be pretty special in terms of uh, yeah, hopefully two thousand or more Christmas fans. Uh, so it would make a great, uh, great, great noise, and, uh, and hopefully uh, something more than that for uh, on the right side. Uh, final question of the night. Uh, yeah. Hopefully not one you have to think about too long. Is it coming home? <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely think it is. I don't know. I kind of a lot of flutter on this. I'm not allowed to do that anymore, by the way. But anyway, but, um, <laughs> I did, I did, when I talk about flutter, I mean something else. I definitely did that. I definitely <laughs> Four months ago, I had a bet on this, that's what I'm saying, before I got involved with football. No, I, I, I think we've got as big a chance as we've ever had. You know, look at the way they were peaking at the right point, one of them in the form. And, uh, no, I genuinely believe it, but in a different way to the year. So hopefully, yes. I, I don't know whether I should really comment on football or <laughs> the same, given that I've clearly just given the wrong answer to the previous question. I might not have a job in the morning. I don't really think you want me tempted in Lee's fate with whether it's coming home or not. I've been singing it's coming home in my mind. I've got that earworm, it's there all day. Fingers crossed, let's hope so. I, I think it'll win tonight, will But tonight's the big well, I think we can uh, just about get ready for that. It's uh, about 20 minutes or so away. Uh, hopefully, we all hope football's coming home. But I know one thing we all think. We all think that Grimsby Town have come home with our new owners and our new CEO because, uh, as we said before, it's a fantastic reception they've had since coming in. And everybody is filled with, uh, I think, hope, expectation and gratitude for you for coming in. We'd like to thank you for coming tonight. Uh, hopefully, all throughout the season, hopefully, we'll see you all again together doing one of these again soon. But everybody, please think that. Thank you, John, for hosting this tonight. But again, this is going to sound like a chosen, but we're really appreciative of the welcome as well. You know, we didn't take it for granted. And hopefully, you know, as we turn up again and again over the next few years, you'll hear us saying the same stuff that this matters to us, you know, it matters to us deeply. So we don't take the support for granted, we don't take the fact that you've taken your time out to come and see us. So it's an open conversation. We hope we do everyone proud, but it's a it's a joint venture. We need the support of everyone in the town. Uh, but we just want to say our appreciation and thank you as well, because it's been uh, it's been overwhelming. So thanks.